everything I said about Israel on your podcast, no one can say that I'm a, a Hamas defender, right? I'm very pro-Israel. But there are people right now that for expressing pro-Hamas beliefs are being, you know, uh, there's companies saying we're never going to hire you to yes. college kids. Uh, there, there's all, all kinds of stuff like this is going on where I'm, I'm totally against it. I, I'm, I'm, I think people should be absolutely free to make these stupid arguments and we should inform them. We should argue. Right, we should have a conversation, right? But e even think, when it's like a really bad belief. But do you think that you would want someone to work for you if you found out that they were pro terrorist? Like no, if you, probably if, not. Like if you found so, if some no, guy I wouldn't, I says wouldn't. he's into ISIS, no, and he wants to work for your company, like you would say, "Hey, I'm not going to hire you because you have decided that you you're pro Taliban." I wonder about that. I wonder about that because I I want to say yes, but. Uh, you know, my friend, my friend, Noam Dorman, who owns a comedy cellar, he says that he has people working in his kitchen. He, this guy, his, both his parents are from Israel, very pro Israel. It's, it's actually the most important issue to him in, in life, perhaps he has people working in his kitchen from the middle East that believe all the propaganda, all the anti-Semitic propaganda that they've been fed, that many people in the Arab world are fed. They, he, they believe the Jews are controlling the media, the Jews are uh, everything, right? And they're right. totally anti-Israel. And maybe some of them would even, are, are even happy about the Hamas attack. But he says, as long as they keep their politics out of work, they don't alienate customers and we treat each other with respect. I'm not going to say I'd fire you or I wouldn't hire you. You know, well, good for him. That's a very beautiful and Jesus-like way of approaching the world. Yeah, I mean, no, but I think it ideally it should be it should be more and more the way we approach the world because I don't think you persuade people by persecuting them. Right. You the know? difference between that and someone like someone holding beliefs because they came from a particular part of the world is very different from someone going out on the street and yelling it, holding up banners and flags, I would agree. using bullhorns. And yeah. that that is what someone might do at a protest. So if you were at a pro-ISIS protest and you were screaming about ISIS's caliphate and that this is the, the, the just way of life and this is what God wants, like I probably don't want you working at Subway. <laughs> You're probably not going to be the dude I want to be making sandwiches next to. You know, and I'm probably if I'm yeah. hiring at an auto repair shop, and this guy thinks he's going to be a martyr if he blows himself up. Maybe I'm not going to hire that guy. Maybe I'm yeah. not going to hire the guy that thinks that it's okay to talk little kids into wearing a fucking vest and walking into a school. I agree. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't like the idea that there's a political litmus test for having a job. Right. Like, and this is part of what's happening with diversity, equity, and inclusion statements is that all over the country, there are these jobs, you know, professorships at universities where in order to be hired, you have to sign and say, I support diversity, equity, inclusion, which, and a, a long paragraph of values you may not hold. Why, why should I need to sign on to that? Uh, it's to, to, to be hired to teach math. Right. Yeah, I, I, I get very uncomfortable with that. It gets slippery that. because yeah, you get to political ideologies that you're forcing people to subscribe to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's it is a slippery slope, right? I mean, if you were a Catholic and you would not hire Baptists, because not Baptists for fools, you, you only believe in hiring Catholics, that would get weird, you yeah. know? And But those, we, we're okay in, in that sense that most people of differing Christian persuasions are comfortable with each other. Lutherans are comfortable around Methodists and they look at Baptists the same way they look at Catholics. Maybe, maybe they look at Mormons weird, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Mormon church. That's a weird one, but you they're know, it's nice though. It's they're very, they're the nicest yeah. people, yeah. but it's, it's very common for people of different branches of Christianity to work together and have no problems. Mm. But it's when things get weird is when you just like one thing is way worse than the other thing, or one thing opposes the existence of another thing. Now we're getting to extreme differences. Mm. Like if the difference between the Hamas and Israel, like if right. you're getting to that, or if you're getting to, you know, Nazis and the Jews, or if you're getting to 
you know, the, you, there's there's things that you can get to where you're like, okay, this is valid, you know. Yeah. These are valid reasons to not be worried. But if you do that and it keeps pushing in a certain direction, it could get to Catholics hating the Protestants. And that's what the fuck happened in Ireland. Mm -hmm. They were blowing each other up. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I went to uh, <laughs> Belfast, Northern Ireland, for a UFC once, mm. there's cars, police cars, that are covered with, like, steel plates to bomb-proof them. Wow. Have you ever seen it? No. It's wild. It's wild. Mm. And the people that live there, they there's people that are there right now that still remember the IRA, mm. and they remember all the bombings and mm -hmm. the terrorists and the horrible things that people from both sides of Ireland mm. did to each other. They're two mm -hmm. totally different countries. Northern Ireland's a completely different country than, than Ireland mm. because of that. And because yeah. of, and a lot of it was wrapped up in religion. And I mean, we don't want to think that that could happen, but whenever you have this thing where you're against someone who's not on your, on your team, that could, that could take place. You could have like a peaceful coexistence like Baptists do with Methodists or you, or it could be fucking horrible mm. and you could other that person. And it's just a part of human programming. So I agree with the new atheist about how many problems have been caused by religion. And I'm an atheist myself. I didn't, I grew up with no religion. On the other hand, the empirical literature suggests that religious people tend to be happier. Mm. And also suggests that conservatives tend to be happier than liberals. And that's a very interesting finding to me because I grew up in a very secular liberal context, was never even tempted by religion, really. Um, like, you know how they say there's no atheists in foxholes? Right. I'd be an atheist in a foxhole. Like, I wouldn't even believe in God, I think, if my, like, I, it just, it's nowhere in me. But... It's an interesting and pretty verified result, I think, at this point that conservatives tend to be happier than liberals, less mental illness, and the religious tend to be happier than the secular. So then the question becomes, why is that? Is it because they believe in religion or is it uh, explained by a third variable? Is it correlation without causation? Is it that religious people have communities they have somewhere to go to where they see familiar faces every Sunday mm. and atheists lack that or they don't have it automatically. And well, it's that's certainly a factor, to right? It I has think to, it's it unquestionably a factor. Got to be a factor. Yeah. Yeah. People need community. It, it is absolutely a part of us. And one of the things you see in primarily secular places, like if you think about New York City, there's so many people, but yet they're not friends with each other and they're all stacked <laughs> on top of each other.